light is turning red. Well, thank you very much, Raphael. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank Julian and Enrique and the colleagues at CNE for the, the great work you're doing and really for the vision that you have for this country. And I would like to thank all the organizers for inviting me. A friend, uh, Rick Wade from the U.S. Department of Commerce, said on this podium yesterday that he's here for the second time now. When he comes the third time, uh, he will consider applying for Dominican citizenship. Uh, in my case, I'm here already for the third time and I have a few more times to go to work with Julian and people at CNE, so I hope you, you get the papers ready. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this panel is on new developments in renewable energies. And the 20 minutes that I have, I want to share two developments. The first one are global developments in the energy sector. To see the big, big picture again, I think uh, this hasn't really been done yet, and it's a look into global energy, renewable energy trends that will allow us, I believe, a glimpse into the future uh, in this century. And the second part of the, the presentation is a look forward, the development from here. It's about what the DR can do to reform its energy systems. And this is something that the World Watch Institute believes it can help with. This is a project running until 2013, our project on energy roadmaps with the Dominican Republic's government. So let's just uh, jump right into it. This, this graph here shows you the growth of renewables in the last five years worldwide, from 2004 to 2009. That's the last reliable data that we have. And what you see on the left-hand side that fossil fuels have remained relatively stable, and nuclear energy actually is the only, is the only energy source that went down in these four to five years. You see that all mainstream renewables uh, have been growing astonishingly. Uh, in the case of biofuels, by about a quarter, wind more than a quarter, and solar more than doubled within this, these five years. Now this is great news, but the picture is unfortunately a, a little bit more ambivalent. This slide shows you that while there is enormous growth in the renewable sector, see the top line in the graph, that shows you the additions of uh, renewables as share of overall additions in the power sector, this is a share that increases every year. The bottom line shows you how far this has gotten us today. So renewables provide an ever-increasing, but still overall rather small percentage of global power generation. Currently about 10% or 12% if you include uh, hydro. These numbers here from, what is that, 2008 uh, have increased. So I think the latest numbers are about 10% uh, and 12 if you do include hydro. I continue this without the slide, but uh, the, the result is really that global primary energy supply, uh, in the global primary energy supply, I have a chart that shows you that fossil fuels are still providing more than 80% of the world's energy demands. Um, and this, of course, is not sustainable for the Earth's climate. If we do not continue to vigorously shift away to more efficient economies, with a much higher portion of renewables, this will continue to hurt us economically, and I would argue it will hurt us quite badly very soon. Let's take the climate problem off the table for a moment, and that's something that I often do, and let's start with the national interests of our countries. With fossil fuel prices shooting up and through the roof in the foreseeable future as our economies recover, we simply do not have an alternative to develop alternative energy technologies as quickly as possible if we do want to sustain economic growth. And that's pretty much true for most places of the world. Now I want to briefly mention that the reason that we are not more ambitious is not due to a lack of renewable potentials. Here you see that even if you look into only one renewable resource, namely the sun, this resource alone provides more than three times the energy flow that we need to satisfy the world's power demands. And this is with today's energy technologies, not with the innovation and the inventions of the future. Here are some of the leading countries that have started to transition their energy systems. And you see Portugal, Germany, Spain, very much ahead of it. 
Denmark is missing here, that's really a leader in the field. And then this graph excludes conventional hydro. If you include small, if you include large scale conventional hydro in this, you would actually see Norway and Brazil at more than 80% on this, on this chart. So you can do this for many different energy technologies, but unfortunately I only have the time to dive a little bit deeper into one particular technology as an example. Uh, but the same can be said about other sources. And here you have the PV capacity of different countries. You see the six leading countries in PV capacity worldwide. I would like to uh, focus on the two ones, Germany on the very left here and the United States about in the middle. The U.S. has about 23 times the land mass of Germany, and that even doesn't include Alaska. And still Germany is uh, uh, leading in, in its PV installments, about nine times of what the U.S. has installed. So the question is why that is. Is this a result of the, the better solar resources in Germany? Well, you're all experts in this field, so you probably know that it isn't. Uh, this uh, chart here shows you that while resources are really a key starting point for a country to assess its potentials in renewable, renewable energies, you see that in fact the resources in poor PV in the US are much better than in Germany. So the result that we see in the PV development is rather a result of political, political will of concrete policies and measures that were implemented and that as a result boosted the deployment of PV in Germany. So some of the slides here are missing, unfortunately. I'm sorry for that, but I have to improvise. I didn't have the time to go into the, the details of this chart anyways. Uh, it's, it's, it shows you different laws that were, uh, and policies that were implemented in Germany over the course of the last 20 years. And uh, what you see is that the market, or any renewable electricity generation, um, has directly responded to it. And it's of course not abrupt because the market anticipates certain laws and it needs a time to react to it. So that's why you, you see it's not more abrupt. But if you do see uh, the growing trends in the market and in, in overall renewable electricity generation is in fact an outcome of uh, political action. I want to finish this, this first uh, uh, graph and make a few points very clear here. First of all, renewable energy potential exists worldwide. It exists in all countries, everywhere in the world. Secondly, we firmly believe that the countries that will start early on to develop their clean energy potential, both efficiency and renewables, will profit economically from doing so. And I very much agree with uh, Joman, I hope I pronounced that kind of right. Uh, I totally agree with him that while for fossil fuels there's really only one trend the longer we wait, which is they get more expensive. For renewable energy technologies there's only one way and that is down. They get more and more cheap, they get cheaper and cheaper. So let me turn to the second part of my uh, uh, presentation, focus in uh, uh, into the, the Dominican Republic. Um, I need to mention this, of course, at this point. Uh, our work is supported by EP, which is the Energy and Environment Partnership of Central America. And we also received a grant from the German government to do our energy roadmaps in the Dominican Republic. And the later grant also allows us to do work in Haiti and uh, in Jamaica. All three countries are, in our view, predestined candidates to be renewable energy, if not first movers anymore, but then quick movers. And here's why. I focus on the Dominican Republic alone. The Dominican Republic has no or no significant fossil resources. 